In the world of research, things can get a little peculiar. But one thing's for sure, not all research is the same. Some is well organized with clear rules, objectives, and a structure that anyone can understand. On the other hand, there's the kind that's so outlandish, it could make waves in today's clickbait world. This story is definitely the latter, so let's step into the intriguing world of Margaret Howe Lovett. She became the central character to an experiment that grabbed the spotlight. According to a well-known adult magazine, Hustler, Margaret had an unusual relationship with a dolphin, and let's just say that guys go to Thailand to get this service done. They are always happy at the ending. So what was this experiment, and is there any truth to these wild claims? Now let's not keep all this fascinating knowledge to ourselves. Join our community of curious minds by subscribing right away to discover the amazing world on Becker's casual history. Margaret Howe Lovett found herself on St. Thomas Island in the US Virgin Islands during her early 20s. It was December 1963 when her brother-in-law dropped a bombshell, revealing the existence of a covert laboratory on the island's eastern tip, where they were conducting experiments with dolphins. Naturally curious, Margaret couldn't resist, and, come January 1964, she drove over to the lab, more for a bit of snooping than anything else. Inside the lab, Margaret crossed paths with Gregory Bateson, a British scholar who dabbled in anthropology and had a passion for schizophrenia. With these traits, how could this story possibly go wrong? When Bateson inquired about her purpose there, Margaret's response was straightforward. She had heard about the dolphins and wanted to see if there was any way she could assist. Her boldness and enthusiasm caught Bateson's attention, leading to an invitation to meet the lab's trio of dolphins. Margaret's initial task was simple, watch the dolphins and document their behavior. Despite lacking scientific experience, her observations and notes pleased Bateson enough to grant her an open invitation to return at her leisure. The lab had been masterminded by American neuroscientist Dr. John Lilly, who harbored a lofty goal, communicating with dolphins and teaching them to produce human-like sounds through their blowholes. In essence, they were attempting to make dolphins speak like people. Now, Dr. Lilly, bless his eccentric heart, believed that the dolphins were sending us some serious signals. So much so that he penned a book titled Man and Dolphin, where he laid out his rather unorthodox theory. You see, he was convinced that the dolphins weren't just making sounds for kicks. They wanted to chat with us humans. In his book, Dr. Lilly elaborated on the idea that these dolphins could mimic our human sounds and argued that we should give teaching them English a good old college try. And his ambitions didn't stop there. He actually proposed the creation of a cetacean chair at the United Nations, a place where marine mammals would have a voice in global affairs. As crazy as it sounds, this notion turned into a full-blown NASA-funded laboratory. And guess who decided to drop by a year after its grand opening? That's right, our intrepid explorer, Margaret Howe Lovett. Margaret was fully dedicated to these dolphins, hanging out with them as much as possible. She was all about bonding and engaging in daily lessons, aimed at getting these aquatic buddies to make human-like sounds. And she wasn't alone in her endeavors. Gregory Bateson, the all-around animal communication enthusiast, was also on board, making sure Margaret was deeply involved in Dr. Lilly's peculiar experiment. Now here's the thing. When the day was done and the human team left for home, Margaret had this idea. She thought, hey, if I can live with these dolphins, maybe I can up their game when it comes to human sounds. Dr. Lilly loved Margaret's idea so much that he arranged for her to practically move in with the dolphins. They set up a bed right on the lab's elevator platform in the middle of the room. And just for good measure, they hung a desk from the ceiling over the water so Margaret could get some paperwork done. It was an experiment in dolphin cohabitation that was just as curious as it sounds. Now, Margaret Howe Lovett embarked on a rather unusual three-month cohabitation experiment, and she picked Peter the dolphin as her special subject. You see, Peter was the odd one out in this tale, as he hadn't received any human sound training, unlike his fellow dolphins, Pamela and Sissy. The grand plan was for Margaret and Peter to be roommates for six days a week, and on the seventh day, Peter would rejoin the ranks of his aquatic friends. But here's where things take an interesting turn. Peter was a maturing young dolphin, and, well, let's just say he had moments of, um, heightened enthusiasm. Peter developed quite the bond with Margaret. 
In fact, he got a little too attached and would occasionally, well, let's say he'd rub himself on Margaret's knee, foot or hand. You get the picture. Now, just like teenage boys during puberty, Peter was a tad, shall we say, distracted by these urges. And the whole process of moving him to and from the tank with the ladies didn't help matters much. So in Margaret's mind, it was time for some distraction control. She made a choice to lend Peter a hand in, well, relieving those urges. She went ahead and manually, let's say, took care of things. Now, I'm not saying that's a normal job duty for anyone, but if you're going to do it, at least have the decency to call it what it is, dolphin hand jobs. But before your eyebrows ascend into the stratosphere, hold on. It's essential to understand that Margaret wasn't engaging in anything remotely like the concept of bestiality, which, let's be clear, is illegal and unethical. In no way did she conduct herself as if this was anything akin to human intercourse. She maintained that it didn't bother her and that this particular activity served a purpose. It helped them return to their lessons. Now, this wasn't some clandestine behind-closed-doors operation. Anyone in the lab could have witnessed Margaret and Peter's interactions. It might sound dubious, but Margaret firmly stated that this wasn't about any human desire for zoophilia. However, the public felt a different way. Hustler magazine published an article in the late 1970s titled Sex, Humans and Dolphin and an illustration of a woman nude gripping onto the underside of a dolphin. Hustler was in direct competition with Playboy, who dominated the market of adult magazines. A sensational article featured a quote from Dr. Lilly about how dolphins mate and their erections, along with statements that one woman claimed to have gotten off approximately 900 times with our aquatic friends, did just what the publishers intended. Thousands of magazines were sold. Now, in a piece of news that will come as no surprise, there was also a twist involving psychoactive drugs. Dr. Lilly was among the select few scientists in the US authorized to research the effects of LSD. So he decided to give the three dolphins some LSD to see what would happen. But, well, the dolphins didn't react at all. So, not only were they not speaking, but they weren't even enjoying the drugs. This lack of results eventually led to a funding drought, and as a result, the experiments came to an abrupt end. The dolphins were then relocated to a facility in Miami, Florida, and here's where the story takes a darker turn. Over the years, animals, including dolphins, have been used in experiments involving LSD as a potential antidepressant. Tragically, in Miami, Peter, the dolphin, took his own life. Now, in the decades that followed, some people believed that Margaret Howe Levatt should be held accountable for what they saw as molesting an animal. However, it's important to note that she wasn't the first, nor the last scientist, who had to manually stimulate animal subjects. So, what's your take on this extraordinary journey into the world of human-dolphin interaction? Was it a unique scientific endeavor? A journey into the unknown realms of interspecies communication? Or was it the weirdest happy-ending massage parlor story ever told? We'd love to hear your thoughts and reflections on this intriguing story. Feel free to share your perspective in the comments.